are some stories that are so wild that you almost can't believe them. But as today's story proves, the truth is often way stranger than fiction. And when a story starts with, Florida man, you just know you're going to be in for a wild ride. Today's story is definitely that, it's one of the wildest, bravest things we have heard in a long time. Come with us to find out how one bear found himself drowning and what a Florida man did that saved the day. Animal lovers, enjoy nothing more than a feel-good story about someone who cared for an animal in distress. There are often small animals that need our help, but when it's a massive creature, one who is normally very capable of taking care of itself, then the story gets another added layer of incredibility. Today's story is all about a massive black bear. The stunning animal weighed around 400 pounds or 180 kilograms and was about six and a half feet tall or two meters. Not really the type of animal that first springs to mind when you think of an animal that could need your help, but in this story, the beautiful bear was in grave danger. If it wasn't for the help of one brave man, he would have certainly died. Bears have an incredible sense of smell and a mighty appetite. That's why campers in the wilds, where bears live, are often warned that they need to keep their food and garbage secure when they go camping, or they might just get a visit from a very hungry and very dangerous animal. Bears don't go out of their way to interact with humans, but as we destroy their natural habitats, wild bears start to move closer to the same areas where people live. And since people's homes are often jam-packed full of things that smell delicious and are enticing to a bear, these bears decide to wander into these areas in the hope of finding a snack. Some bears even lose their fear of humans completely, and this can cause disaster if they insist on coming back to a residential area. Often, this is why wildlife authorities work quickly to relocate wandering bears back to where they came from. They don't want bears to become too comfortable or used to hanging around human areas. One day, residents of Alligator Point, Florida, noticed a massive black bear wandering the streets in search of food. He wasn't looking for trouble, just for snacks, and he had probably lost his way from Osceola National Forest near Lake City. He was lost and hungry and did what any intelligent bear would try to do, he looked for food. He was seen sniffing through people's garbage, trying to mind his own business. He wasn't doing any damage yet, but wildlife authorities knew that they had to get him sedated and back home. You might wonder why they couldn't just wait for the bear to make his way back out of the residential area and back home in the same way that he had gotten there. That would be for the safety of the humans living in the area and for the safety of the bear. Just imagine how it felt from the bear's perspective. You stumbled into an area that seemed like a dream come true, loads of yummy snacks to steal. You only need to rip open a couple of bags, and you don't even have to go hunting. There aren't a lot of other bears trying to steal your food and your turf, and you don't need to constantly protect yourself. Why would you ever want to leave this cozy situation? It seemed ideal for the bear. But the problem is that the longer he stayed in the quiet little neighborhood, the more likely he was to encounter humans and possibly even injure someone. People had to think of the safety of the neighborhood and the children that could be playing in the streets. The bear had to be evicted and sent back home. Luckily, the bear had not yet formed a habit of coming back to the same area, and wildlife authorities would be able to dark him, get him nice and sleepy, and then move him back home. Or at least that's what was supposed to happen. Working with wild animals always comes with risks. They don't react in the way that you would like them to, and they can completely surprise you. And that is for sure what the bear did. The rescue team followed the bear from a distance, and then when he was in a spot where they could safely pick him up, they shot him with a dart. They expected him to become drowsy and fall asleep, but darts don't always work instantly. Adrenaline can allow an animal to stay awake for slightly longer than they are expected to, and during that time, things can go seriously wrong. This is one case of that happening, luckily, drastic mistakes don't often happen, and it's still one of the most humane ways that rescue teams have to work with wild animals. But there is room for error, and during this rescue, everything seemed to combine to create a possible tragedy. The bear was having a great day, just wandering along, when the humans came around and shot him with a dart. Instead of falling where he was, it gave him a massive fright, 
enough to get the adrenaline pumping and to allow him to bolt. He ran to get away from the people who were chasing him. The poor bear was already starting to feel woozy, and he just knew he had to get away from the perceived danger that the humans posed. He knew just where to get away from them, straight into the Gulf of Mexico. Bears are strong swimmers, and despite their hefty bodies, water is often their happy place. It made sense that the bear would think that this could be a place where he would be safe. The only problem is that the dark was starting to take effect. He might have been able to get away in normal circumstances, but if he passed out while in deep water, he would just drown. The rescuers were horrified. It seemed like they were going to have to watch as a bear that they were only trying to help would drown, and it would be their fault. The bear was just awake enough to pose a serious risk, and for seconds, everyone seemed to be at a loss about what to do. Everyone except for one man, that is, biologist Adam Warwick just knew that he wasn't going to stand by and watch the bear drown. He didn't give himself time to think, a good move since rational thinking would just have made him realize how crazy his next steps would be. He pulled off his shirt and shoes and jumped in after the bear. He knew he had to go and get him. Getting that close to the bear was very risky. In his panic, he could have easily killed Adam, but the bear allowed him to put his arm around his neck and start to pull him back to shore. This is a massive animal, and under normal circumstances, Adam would never have gotten this close and would never have been able to pull his weight. But the adrenaline was pumping, and the water helped to carry the bear's giant weight. There were a few scary moments when the bear tried to climb on top of Adam to stop himself from drowning. But luckily, Adam managed to get the giant animal back under control and pull him towards the shallow water. Adam cut his feet on some of the barnacles at the bottom of the river, but the bear didn't harm him. In the pictures, he seems like a lifeguard saving a tired swimmer, only the swimmer is a massive bear. As he drew close to shore, Adam grew tired, and the bear was starting to become too heavy to carry on his own. But that is when some of his colleagues stepped in. They all helped to get the bear close to shore, and with the help of a tractor bucket, they picked him up and placed him in the transportation vehicle that would take him home. At that point in the rescue story, Adam was way too invested to just easily part ways with the tired bear, and he tagged along to the national forest. He could see with his own eyes as the bear he saved woke up and happily moved back into the forest. He was happy and safe, and hopefully, the ordeal would scare him enough to stay far away from any areas inhabited by humans. Do you think it was brave or crazy for Adam to dive in after the bear? How did these stories develop? If this is your first time here and you want to hear some brand new stories that will make you smart and knowledgeable, make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any updates. We humans are not alone on this planet, we share it with all other animals, and just as we affect other animals, they affect us, albeit not to the same degree. To remind ourselves that we are not the largest on this planet and the best creatures, so we have a list of the most dangerous. Animals in the world, tigers, they live in Asia and are the most murderous cat species in history, tiger attacks become especially frequent in areas with high tiger populations, these regions had to contend with growing human populations. At least 373,000 people were killed by tigers in India alone, between 1800 and 2009, there are less than 4,000 tigers left in the world today, so their confrontation with humans has decreased dramatically, so no one knows all over the world how many people die due to tiger attacks, but after searching, we know the approximate estimated number of deaths. We can estimate that tigers kill at least 50 to 250 people every year around the world. There is a good chance that tigers kill more people each year than lions. Ramon lives with his parents, wife and five-year-old daughter Laura in a small village near the Siberian forest. The young man is a ranger and enjoys hanging out in the forest and practicing his favorite hobby, which is hunting and taking photos of the animals, the forest around the village where Ramon lives is full of predators, and tigers and wolves are the most dangerous. These animals blocked the way of some villagers and caused them harm. The young man was used to participate in the best nature photography competition held every year in a city 15 kilometers away from his village. In that year, he decided to participate in this competition and win this contest, which got him a new high-quality camera, 
he waited for the winter to come, when the mountains were covered with snow, he started his journey and took a picture, which got him the prize he's been looking for for years. One day, when Ramon was wandering in the forest, he found a newborn tiger, which was so weak that it seemed that its mother had abandoned it, leaving it alone in the forest, and the young man brought the tiger home but his mother rejects the idea, out of fear of tigers and she was worried about the safety of her granddaughter, Ramon convinced his mother that the tiger cub is a peaceful animal and he is in desperate need of help. Snow covered the ground outside, which reduced his chances of getting food, the little tiger was so cute, he loved Ramon's daughter, and he would take care of her. The little girl never left the tiger and played with it all the time, the little tiger also interacted with the little girl a lot, played with her, over time, the little tiger won the hearts of all the family members, everyone approached and petted it. They started keeping him as a domestic animal, which was a good thing for Ramon's daughter, but on the other hand, it also affected her studies, because it was obvious that the girl was always absent-minded and not paying attention to her lectures at home, because she spends most of her time playing with small animals. When Ramon noticed that his daughter's academic performance was declining, he decided to isolate her from the cubs and no longer allow them to spend long periods of time together, but this did not affect their relationship, although Ramon's wife kept urging him release the little tiger. However, he kept the matter on hold because he knew it would not be easy to separate the tiger from his daughter. After three months, the tiger had grown in size and its tusks had started to emerge, after Ramon and his wife found it was a tigress, the signs of ferocity in the tigress had already shocked his wife and his parents. They are seriously considering returning it to the forest because it has become a danger and the girl Laura is shocked by their decision to abandon the tigress. One day, when the girl was sleeping, Ramon got up in the morning, after opening the door, he found the tigress had left the cage, she had left the cage where she had been held for more than three months, she had gone into the woods to find her family, the mother tiger was very calm, Ramon saw how she left and she watched for a long time behind her who took care of her for more than three months. When the girl woke up in the morning and didn't find the tigress, she was so shocked that she worried about her for days. But as time went by, she gradually forgot about it, after being separated from the tigress for six months, one day the girl went skiing in the forest with his father, when Ramon entered the forest and photographed the animals jumping between the trees and the snow, Laura was still gliding alone, and suddenly she lost control of the skateboard, she skated through the forest until she collided with a tree and fell. This made her unconscious and the girl who fell lay on the ground didn't wake up until a bird landed on her head. Laura got up and started looking for her father, but she couldn't find him. The girl was in the woods wandering around, and then she decided to go home, the weather was getting worse and the snow was getting heavier. The snow started to hit the place and then all the roads disappeared and the sight was completely lost, which left Laura lying on a tree, she stayed in her place quietly, she was very scared, the girl from her pocket took out a candy and ate it because she was very hungry and kept calling for her father, maybe he would hear and come help him. But suddenly a huge bear appeared and started approaching the little guy, the snow kept falling in that forest for a long time, probably the bear hadn't eaten for a long time, it made him very hungry, he did not going to miss such a great meal, Laura realized, and the bear wouldn't hesitate to eat him. The animal started making scary noises, then it walked towards the little girl and picked up speed, then the little girl started crying and closed her eyes, she was waiting for the hungry bear to devour her but suddenly she heard the sound of fighting between animals. When she opened her eyes, he found a huge tiger and some cubs attacking the angry bear, which was about to devour her. Immediately after being attacked, the bear ran away, and then the big tiger came towards him, keeping its head on her and the little girl realized that this big tiger was the one her father had kept at their home for more than three months tiger. She then hugged it too because she felt it was safe and relaxed with it, meanwhile Ramon found his baby when he noticed her warming up with her friend tiger, he keenly captured this unique scene, took a picture of them, and then called out to his daughter, who soon came to him, and he kept embracing her. On their way home, Ramon and his daughter noticed the tigress and her cubs following them, and as they approached the house, the animals left and disappeared into the woods, after they had searched everywhere without finding them, they decided to go home, and she remembered the good times they had together. When they got home, 
they found family members anxiously waiting for them to come home. When the date came for the best photo contest, Ramon decided to choose the picture of his daughter hugging a tigress to enter the competition, while they were in the forest with snow falling on them, the picture surprised everyone and made him win the game, it is well deserved. The photo was also circulated on the internet, even in some local and international newspapers, and appeared on television, where it appeared with drawings and children's clothing, and finally the photo won several national and international awards, Ramon earned a lot of money, which made him always remember the kindness of the tigress, and his heart was filled with gratitude to her, which was a situation he had never expected before.